Stay tuned to hear what the hospital tried to do to me, but you know your girl was not letting that happen. I just want to be 100% recovered so I can be outside, outside. Come and fly away with me. Come and fly away with me. Come and fly away with me. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Centressa Marie and welcome to my life. If you guys are new here, I would love for you to stick around. So please consider subscribing. So guys, I have been going through some traumatic health issues. Behind the scenes of me still vlogging and uploading my videos every Monday at 6 o'clock, I have been dealing with some health problems. I did not tell any of my YouTube family, but I think it's about time I let you guys know what's been going on. So I'm just going to jump right into it. On February 29th this year, Leap Year Day, me, at 43 years old, had a laparoscopic hysterectomy. Yes, your girl had a whole hysterectomy. Well, I should say partial hysterectomy. My hysterectomy included the removal of my uterus, my cervix, and my fallopian tubes. It wasn't a full hysterectomy because I still have my ovaries. If it was a full hysterectomy, they would have removed my ovaries too. And since my ovaries were not removed, I will not go into medical menopause. I'll just go through menopause when the time comes. If I would have had my ovaries removed, I would have went into menopause like maybe a couple days or a week after the surgery. But because I still have mine, whenever nature brings my menopause on, that's when it will start. And in my family, it's probably a little bit closer to 50. So I'm going to give you a quick background story on why I had to have this procedure because this video really isn't about that. It's more about what I had to do to prepare myself and my family for the recovery after I had the surgery. The things I had to do and the things I had to buy and the things I had to get ready so that it could be easier for me and my family once I came home. I should have said this in the beginning. But there's going to be a lot of TMI in this video. So if you don't want to hear all the good and the bad and the kind of gross things that I might have to let you guys know. Because I want to inform you um, somewhat so you know you know what, what was going on and you know explain some things. If you don't want to hear those kind of things then you can just skip on. Maybe go to one of my other videos and watch them. But this video is for information purposes. If you do not want to hear it, I don't mind if you skip past this one. But go check out one of my other videos. So if you guys see me looking over here, that's because my iPad is right here. And I wrote down some notes so that I don't forget to tell you guys important information. So in November last year, 2023, my period came on naturally. It came on five to seven days. It went off. I knew my period was supposed to be off um, before my birthday. So everything was good. Two days later, after my period went off, it came back on. Um, it stayed on for a, a while and I kind of never thought anything about it. I just figured my body's changing. Maybe it's menopause. Maybe I calculated the days wrong and it's still on. But it stayed on for quite a while. Going to work, you know, I found myself using the bathroom even more. I found myself changing my um, personal things even more. And I started developing blood clots. I started noticing blood clots and you know, much more heavy bleeding. I was at Walmart buying pads, you know, constantly. So finally, I called my gynecologist and got an appointment. She ran a whole bunch of tests. And so after all the tests that my doctor performed, in the end, it came back that I had polyps in my uterus and I also had fibroids. So this is why I was bleeding a lot. After losing all the blood, I became very anemic. I was already anemic, taking iron pills every day. But now I'm more anemic. And this is why I was feeling fatigue and all of that. So my gynecologist scheduled me to have a DNC. So during the DNC, she scraped my uterus and got rid of all the blood in the lining. And she also got rid of the fibroid and the polyps. After the surgery, oh my God, I felt 100% better. 
my period wasn't on anymore. Well, I should say I wasn't bleeding anymore. And my energy came back like 100%. I was feeling so much better. I thought everything was fine and I was getting back to myself, getting back through my life. So now I'm feeling all good and everything's back to normal. My energy's back up. A week later, I get a phone call from my doctor and she tells me that the pathology report came back that my cervix contained a lot of precancerous cells. After talking to my doctor um, face to face, that was a phone call. I scheduled an appointment. Me and my fiance went. We talked to her. I did my own research. I talked to family and friends who've been through this. And of course, I looked up YouTube videos. But in the end, we decided that I'm not having any more children. I've had my tubes tied already for 18 years. I'm not having any more children. And to get rid of the precancerous cells and to clean everything out, we decided together that a hysterectomy was going to be the best way to go. And I, I opted to have my surgery on February 29th, 2024. So that was just a quick summary of what I've been going through for the last few months. Now, you know, my surgery was February 29th and today is March 12th. So I've done have my surgery and I'm in recovery now. And since I'm in recovery right now, I'm feeling good and I want to come to you and give you guys a list of a few things that the doctor gave me, the hospital gave me, things I brought and things I had to do to prepare for my recovery. And before we proceed, I just want to say that these are things that I brought, things that my doctor told me to get and things that I've done to make sure my recovery is easy, but make sure you check with your doctor before you buy anything because your doctor may have different instructions for you. My procedure was done laparoscopically. So I don't have, you know, the big scar down my stomach. I don't have a C-section scar at all. I have three little incisions in my belly, one on the left, one on the right, and one through my belly button, where the doctor went in, cut everything that she had to remove, did everything she had to do, and pulled everything out of my body through my vagina. So I have stitches in my belly. They're only like one and a half inch um, in length. And she went through my belly button, of course. And then I have stitches inside my vagina because again, that's where they had to bring everything out from. So those are the areas that I'm mostly sore in. Having my surgery done laparoscopically ensured me a faster recovery. But with any major surgery, I'm going to be under certain restrictions. I'm going to be on certain medications. So I wanted to make sure I had everything I wanted and everything I needed done before my recovery began. My fiance and my adult daughter will both be with me the day of surgery. Then the next day, my daughter will go back to work, but my fiance will be off of work with me um, for three days. And then of course he has to go back to work. I do have a teenage son here who will be able to help me when need be, but he does have school. So after that, the following Monday, everyone will be out the house and I will be alone. So I wanted to have certain things prepared for myself to make it easier for me basically when I'm alone. Number one, go grocery shopping. I went to the store, I got a big haul of groceries for my household, but I also picked up a few things for myself. I didn't know how long I was gonna be nauseous after surgery from the anesthesia. I didn't really know how my stomach was gonna feel the first couple of days, if I was able to hold down certain things. Like they took things out of my body and I just didn't know what I could eat or if I could eat normally and not, you know, feel sick. So I just went and picked up things like peanut butter crackers. I picked up some bananas. I love bananas. I picked up some protein shakes because I like protein shakes that keep me full. Um, they're liquid, easy to drink, easy to hold down. I also picked up some soups, chicken noodle soups, and I got some chicken broth in case I couldn't hold things down. I could just warm up some chicken broth, drink it, have some food inside my body. So definitely go grocery shopping. Every body is different. So you might pick up different things for yourself. Number two, 
What I did was I moved all the things that I knew I was going to need. If they were higher up, I moved them to a lower area. Anything like my crackers, my soups, any um, water bottles that were on the floor. I put everything on the counter in the kitchen in an area where I can get things easily. I knew I was not going to be able to bend over to get water bottles. I knew I was not going to be able to reach up high to grab soups and crackers out of the refrigerator. You're not going to be able to bend. Bending is one of the things that's going to take time to do because you have all this stuff they took out of you and you have some stitches going on. So another thing to get that you should have is a grabber. This thing is a lifesaver. If I drop something on the floor, pick it right up. If something was kind of high and I could just go like this and grab it, this thing is a lifesaver. Get yourself a grabber, cause when nobody's around and something falls, you're gonna wish you had this. I clean my house here and there every day, doing little things, but I do my main cleaning on Sundays. But my procedure this week was gonna be on a Thursday, so I decided to do my cleaning a little bit early. I got the wash done which is the laundry. I cleaned the kitchen, the bathroom, I vacuumed the household, dusted, and I also changed the sheets on my bed so that when I come home, I'm coming home to a freshly cleaned house. Get all your paperwork done. It's really important to have your paperwork filled out and appointments set because when you're in recovery, that's the last thing you wanna worry about. You don't wanna have to worry about signing papers, faxing papers, and making sure people get what they need. I had to do FMLA paperwork for my job, got that out the way. I had to fill out short-term disability paperwork so that I could get paid while I was out of work. And I also had to make my post-op appointments for after the surgery. And I also had to push back all of my future appointments um, while I was in recovery. I pushed all those back to after my recovery so I didn't have to worry about calling and rescheduling those appointments because I wasn't able to get there. Number six is make sure you get all your pre-op testing done. You're going to have to get a lot of blood work done. You're going to have to get EKGs done, chest x-rays done. You want to make sure you schedule those things and have those things done before your procedure. Your doctor will inform you and make sure that you have all the scripts and things that you need because you don't want anything delaying your procedure. I know I didn't. If I had a procedure on February 29th, I made sure I had everything done a day or two before my procedure. If you don't and they have to push your procedure out even further, you don't want that. So just make sure you get all your pre-op testing done. Gas X. So during your surgical procedure, the doctor will pump your stomach up with gas in order to inflate the stomach like a balloon, almost like you're pregnant, so that they can work inside your stomach and have space in your stomach to move around. That air is pumped out of your body or sucked out of your body after the procedure, but my I was told that 100% of it is not sucked out. There is still air trapped in your body and around your organs and everything. So the best thing to get for that is gas -X. Some people use gas -X, some people use other kind of gas -X products. This came from Walmart and it was like $4 and it worked. The gas pains are horrible. They start in your stomach, they can move to your shoulder, your back, it's painful. The gas, you're, you're farting, TMI, you're farting all day long, and I was belching a lot too. The air stayed in my stomach for probably about three to four days, and then I started feeling a lot of relief. The gas pills really help, and that's something that my doctor recommended that I get. Another thing let's talk about is constipation. You're going to get constipated, and it is not pretty. I heard a lot of horror stories but it didn't happen to me because your girl was prepared. My doctor and other people told me to start taking stool softeners as soon as I get home, which these came from CVS. This is just a cheap brand. They work. I was taking two pills a night. I was also told that maybe I should get some laxative packets. There's Miralax and then there's these brand here. This is from Walmart again. Um, they're individual packets and you just put them in water and you drink it. 
just in case I had an emergency and I really wasn't going, someone told me to get Smooth Move. This is a tea that's powerful. I have not drank it. I have not needed it because those other items help me stay regular and not be constipated. You don't want to have to push. You don't want to have to strain yourself. It is painful. You have stitches in your stomach, stitches in the inside and outside. You don't want to be sitting on a toilet and have to strain to use the bathroom. So please pick up those items or similar items to help you in your recovery. So I don't know what number we're on, but we're gonna keep this thing rolling. We're gonna keep this thing flowing. Speaking of flowing, you're not gonna have a period no longer. They're taking off the body parts inside of you that make you have a period. So after your surgery, you're gonna have, yes, a little bit of spotting, maybe a little bit of discharge, but after the first two or three weeks, everybody's different, but you're gonna stop your period. But in the meantime, you don't need twos and threes and fours. If you know, you know. All you're gonna need is some panty liners. So grab yourself a box of panty liners so you can keep yourself fresh and clean. Next, I want you to make sure you get yourself some nice loose clothing, some nice loose pajamas, some oversized t-shirts, some big sweatpants. You don't want anything tight and restricting around your stomach. You're gonna feel irritated, it's gonna rub and get infected, and that's not what you want. Also, it's easier to have a nightgown on or a big t-shirt when it's time to go to the bathroom, when it's time to get in the shower and change your clothes, things like that. You don't wanna have to struggle to take things on and off. Wearing tight pants or tight pajama pants is gonna be hard to bend over, pull them up and down when you're using the bathroom. So to make things easier, I just brought a bunch of these pajamas. They were from Walmart. These are nightgowns. They're different, you know, styles. I brought about three of them. I do have other clothing, but I also have sweatpants that I wore during the day and these kind of pajamas I wore at night. You wear what you like to wear, but just make sure that they are comfortable. So right now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the morning of my procedure. The morning of my procedure, I had an arrival time of seven o'clock a.m. Before I left the house, I had to take a shower, no lotions, powders, deodorants, or jewelry. I got there on time and they took me right back to the pre-op room. When I walked in there on the bed, they had a nightgown or a hospital gown. They had um, hospital socks, they had a hospital cap for my hair, and they also had surgical wipes. Surgical wipes were for me to wipe down my body before surgery, they were like big baby wipes and you had to wipe every part of your body down before you put on a gown. I'm gonna insert a clip of me using the surgical wipes so you can see what I mean. I have to do this. They gave me these wipes. And pre-surgery, I have to wash each part of my body with the wipes. So we're gonna do my neck and shoulders and chest first chest it was wet my neck and my shoulders now the instructions are telling me to do my arms and hands with the next wipe Step three, stomach, groin, perineum. Okay, you guys can't see that part. Now we're gonna move on to the right leg and foot and the left leg and foot. The last step is my back and buttocks. I'm gonna do my best to get my back. All done. So let's jump right back into the things you need to get and the things you need to do before your procedure. The next thing you need to have is a hysterectomy pillow. I don't know if it's just a hysterectomy pillow or if it's just a pillow for people who have surgery in their stomach, but you need the pillow. It has to be a small but thick pillow that you can hold across your stomach. I did not have to buy one of these because one was provided to me by the hospital. I don't know what hospital you might go to or what doctor's office you might use,
but you should ask your doctor or call the hospital to find out if they provide one so that you don't have to buy one either. This is the pillow that they gave me. This pillow is very firm and very small and I place it right below my stomach right here and that's where you should hold it. This pillow is good for holding tight when you have to sneeze, when you have to cough, you can put pressure through the pillow onto your stomach so it stops some of the pain, not all of it. This pillow is especially good for when you're leaving the hospital because you don't wanna take that seatbelt and put it across your body and that seatbelt be rubbing on your stomach. You put this between you and the seat belt, you pull it across and you snap yourself in. This pillow is good for when you're getting up and down off a chair. You wanna hold this against your stomach when you're lifting up and sitting down. It's good for when you're trying to get in and out the bed, something to hold on to because you wanna protect your stomach. Again, get yourself one of these pillows. If it's not this one, get yourself a nice, small, but thick pillow, firm pillow because this is gonna help you so much with all your movements. The next item you definitely wanna to wanna to have before you go to the hospital or the hospital might even provide it for you is an abdominal binder. An abdominal binder is almost like, I would say compared to like a waist trainer, but you don't make it as tight. So your hospital might provide it for you or you can probably buy it on your own, but check before you buy it. I got my abdominal binder from the hospital. They provided this for me, I did not have to buy it. But if your hospital does not provide one, please make sure you get one. I love this thing. When I started to get up and walk around, I will feel my stomach feeling tight and heavy. This abdominal binder helps hold your stomach muscles together to relieve pain. Relieve pain as you're starting to get back to yourself and walk around the house. It helps hold all that stomach muscles together and it really makes your stomach feel a lot better when you're walking around. I'm gonna demonstrate on how I wear it. It has Velcro along here and they tell you to put it a little lower than your belly. So it's kind of like covering my butt and then you bring one side around here and you stretch this side and bring it around just like this. It holds all this swelling, all this pain from the muscles all together. So as I'm walking around, it's not as heavy feeling and it doesn't have, it doesn't cause, it doesn't make me feel too much of the pain. Your doctor should also be writing your prescription for pain meds. My daughter picked up my pain meds the day of my surgery, so when I got home, they were already here waiting for me. Some of the medications that my doctor prescribed me was Motrin 600. I had to alternate that with Tylenol. This is Tylenol um, 500. And then they also provided me, if I had extreme pain, they also provided me with a narcotic, which I have not taken any because I didn't need any, still a full bottle. They also provide you with Zofran. Zofran is for nauseousness and it really works. All right guys, we are almost to the end, but let me tell you how these people at this hospital tried to kick me out. Most people, when they have this kind of procedure and everything goes well, they get to go home the same day. Right after their procedure, right after they wake up from recovery, walk around a little bit and use the bathroom, once they're fully recovered out of anesthesia, they can go straight home. Not me, I wasn't having it. This procedure was something new to me, something new to my body. They took organs out of my body that I have had in me for 43 years. I kind of know what to expect for recovery, but there were so many emotions I was going through once I came out of anesthesia and knew that everything was over. I started having a little bit of a panic attack. I started to become scared and I did not want to go home. I wanted to at least be stay in the hospital for one night, stay overnight, so that I can have medical professionals 
right there if I needed them. They told me, oh, you know, everything went well. You can go home. If anything happens, you can just call us and we'll bring you right back. I didn't want to go through all that. So after they understood what I was saying and how I was feeling, they granted me my one night stay and I was able to have the nurses come check on me overnight. I was able to get my medicine from them overnight and just feel more comfortable and, you know, secure that I was in a hospital where if anything was to go wrong or if I felt any type of way, I had someone right there that could come in and help me. And without incident, the next afternoon, I was able to go home. So guys, we have come to the end of this vlog and I hope you got a lot of information. I hope I helped you understand what I went through. If you're going through something like that, there are some items that I suggest that you get, but also talk to your doctor. And I just wanted to tell you the journey that I went through. I'm in recovery now. I still have a lot of weeks to go, a lot of time to go, but it's easy because I have the support and the supplies that I need. If you guys have any questions, because there are people out there who may be going through this, may be about to go through this or have had it and you want to talk about, you know, our differences and similarities of what we went through, please leave it down below in the comment section. I always comment back. If this is not the type of vlog or video that you like to watch that interests you, don't worry. Go back and watch my over 100 videos that I have posted because I post every Monday at 6 o'clock. Watch some of those videos, like, comment, and subscribe so you can stick around.